Many thanks for joining us. You are definitely watching Parastatal TV, the station that promotes the role of state cooperation. This is Frontline and I am your host, PK Wanjiro. Now this lovely evening, we are privileged to be hosting none other than the Vice Chancellor of Pan-African Christian University, Margaret J. Mothui. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, basically, um, introduce us to Pan-African Christian University for somebody who's getting to watch this for the first time. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Pan-Africa Christian University, yes. actually it's without the N. Uh -huh. Pan-Africa Christian University yes. is popularly known as PAC University, just standing for the acronyms P, yes. A and C, Pan-Africa Christian University. This is a university that is chartered, chartered meaning it has got the authorization to offer higher education in Kenya. Mm -hmm. We are chartered by CUE, Commission for University Education. We were chartered in 2008. And uh, some people may think that's the beginning of Pan-Africa Christian University. No, yes. no, no. Pan-Africa Christian University existed about 36, 37 years ago. Okay. And what surprised me about this university when I got to know about it is that from day one, they were offering degrees. Mm -hmm. It did not start with diploma and then graduate to degrees. No, it of always offered degrees. Uh, actually, the diplomas we offer now started only just the other day. Otherwise, it has been offering degrees. It started offering uh, degrees in Bible and theology. Mm -hmm. And it's been doing that, preparing church leaders, actually some of the leading church leaders in this nation, mm -hmm. trained here. Mm -hmm. And uh, we could name quite a number, but quite a number of those who trained here, because it was Pan-Africa, mm -hmm. it trained for quite a, uh, other countries in Africa. Yes. So it started with Bible and theology, also translation, Bible translation. It did it for quite a while. And then uh, it started gr desiring to prepare people not because again you know this is a christian universe so initially it was the idea was you train people for the church mm -hmm. but sooner or later you discover the church is not just uh, preaching in a pulpit it is the whole spectrum of society mm -hmm. so other courses were introduced mm -hmm. some of the first that were introduced was counseling mm -hmm. uh, we do counseling psychology here and we actually we are right now one of the leading sp uh, places to train in counseling psychology and I'll, you'll, I'll tell you why in a little while so we started with counseling psychology, we went to leadership, because at that time the need in this nation, and still is in Africa, is issues of leadership. We, we stumble a lot when it comes to leadership, when it comes to what is really a good leader, what are the good qualities of leadership, yes. what are the skills and, and preparations that are needed for a person to lead. For, you know, you, you, we, we do everything, after, okay, we do some of the most excellent things we do after preparation. And so the issue of people leading without preparing them causes part of the stumbling that we have. So we have leadership courses up to the PhD level now, and then uh, other courses came on board like uh, business courses. We now teach up, teach up to MBA mm -hmm. level. We have courses in community development. We have courses in um, communication. That's a new one with all this media. Yes. You know, you need to train people to handle the world of today, the media world of today. So, so several courses have come on board. Some of our programs are distance learning. We have a lot of distance learning, yes. which is online. Quite a number of them are online, like our leadership courses are mainly online. And then others are face-to-face. -face. Others are during the holidays. Some students come during the holidays to learn and on and on. So it's, it's an institution that is chartered by CUE. Uh, it offers a variety of, of programs. It uh, caters for older people and younger people. Actually, we are rearing ourselves to attracting more younger people. So for example, we are working on some of the things that would attract younger people are extracurricular things. Things like the quality of life in a university campus. Mm -hmm. So we are working on those to ensure that, for example, our student union is strong, to ensure that the playing fields are in, in shape and in good shape, to ensure that uh, extracurricular activities that they love to do and engage in, that they are able to do. So it's a university that is uh, grown. It's grown in the last... Uh, um, a few years. Yes. Um, now we are looking at nearly 4,000 students. Okay. Yes, nearly, nearly 4,000 students at the moment. Uh, and again, as I mentioned earlier, I was, we started with degree, and then recently we uh, uh, put in place a few diploma programs, yes. but also we are strengthening our capacity in master's and PhD. We have two PhD programs, one in leadership and another one in, uh, in uh, marriage and family therapy. And I'm saying that slowly because, yes, yes, because it is, we don't have another one in Africa to the best of our knowledge. 
on marriage and family therapy. Uh -huh. No, we at least we haven't had. So when our marriage and family therapy at master's level was approved, we knew we were the only one. Wow. Right now, other universities are trying to engage that also. And why did we go that way? We have been told from reliable sources in the pulpit, the Christian space, yes. and even the, the secular space, they say when they do counseling, yes. about 90% of issues that people are wrestling with mm -hmm. are issues of which have got to do with the family. Yes. You trace it and it always has to do with something that is not going right in the family. And that is traumatizing people. It is, it is making people unsettled in society. So that's why we thought there is a new field of science now, marriage and family therapies. Yes. And it is, there are very, very many kinds of therapies now. But that one, marriage and family therapy, is one of the strong therapies that we thought th it needs to be on our space in Kenya. And, and I can assure you the clientele, the people who need to be trained, there are many. And then also, not only just people training people to, 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 to do the work, yes. but even the people that are coming to us to, to be counseled and help yes. uh, related with marriage, issues related with marriage. So we do that quite a bit. Uh, we have a counseling center here. Mm -hmm. And we, in some cases, we actually offer pro bono. We don't charge people all the time. Okay. Yeah, we don't charge all the time. We even offer in committee prison. We've done that for many years as a university. Mm -hmm. My students, st teams go to committee prison to, mm -hmm. to support the people there. Mm -hmm. so that, and you know therapy is not something you do once and run. Yeah, it is something you do and work with a person until you see that they are strengthened, they are helped, they are enabled to get out of point A to point B. So we've done that with committee and we still do today. Uh, probably there's somebody who's uh, listening uh, to you at home or watching from home and uh, they're asking what really makes, uh, I, I know you've talked about the two PhD um, programs that you offer, but I would like to know why study at Park University and not any other university? Uh, that's a good question. Why would somebody want to come to, to Park University? First of all, let me say where Park University is. You know, somebody else might be watching and wondering, where is this university? <laughs> Park University has two campuses, one on Valley Road, yes. uh, on what is uh, called CITAM, NPC, CITAM uh, uh, Valley Road. We have a campus there, which is again approved by CUE. In fact, for us, it was interesting when they were closing others, they were accrediting ours. Wow. So it's quite a good campus on Valley Road. And again, quite a number of the programs I mentioned are offered there. And then uh, we have this campus where we are now in Roisambu or Thika Road. Uh, which is just behind Safari Park. We are just behind. You can use the USIU road and enter here or come through Lumumba Drive. So why would somebody want to come to a university like this? Uh, we are a big campus. This is a, a good campus. You've seen the greenery. Yes. Yeah, the greenery, the, the spaces, the green spaces. It's really a beautiful campus for somebody who is looking for a quiet place to study. We have wonderful resources in our library, absolutely good library. Uh, we have, um, I think also what, what attracts, uh, let me come from the, from the client's part. Eh? Some people tell us they like us because of the fees. Our fees are not expensive. We are not the top, we're not an expensive private university. We are affordable. We are not cheap, <laughs> because, but we are affordable. Then also we have ways in which our students pay fees that enables them to, to complete the fees to be able to roll on to the next term. And still on that, uh, do you offer scholarships? I was just going to come to that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yes, we have worked very hard as a university to ensure we have scholarship. Uh -huh. And I can tell you sometimes we have more scholarships than the applicants. Wow. Yes. Okay. Because, cool. yes, yes we do. We do because we have scholarships that are supported from monies coming from abroad mm -hmm. because of our heritage. We were a scholarship, a, a university started originally by missionaries mm -hmm. and they are those who have continued interest in supporting the programs and certain characteristics within the university. So I do have program, uh, scholarships from abroad, but I also have entities here in Kenya that have put in their money. Mm -hmm. I have one church, for example, that last year they gave us 1.8 million for scholarships wow. and just said, you know, give to the students. So we had, we had quite some scholarships and also don't forget, uh, students, because we are a chartered university, our students can get higher loans board. Help, you can go for help. So my students benefit from help loan, they benefit from scholarships that come like that, whether it's the local one and the international one. Mm -hmm. And then of course people are able to be supported in other ways. Our scholarship is also related to work study. So if you want, you can also be doing some little work and then earn money to pay for your upkeep mm -hmm. at the university. So I was just saying, scholarship is a major attraction. 
um, the fees that we charge are, are not very, ex it's not exorbitant. The other thing I would say attracts people here is the particular programs. If you've listened to those programs I'm mentioning, some of them are cutting edge. Actually, most of the programs, we don't start a program because it is in another university. We start a program because we have researched it. We know it is meeting a need in society. So tell me, for example, in this country, we do not have anybody who has a PhD in marriage and family therapy. Yes. To start this program, we had to rely on people from Canada to support us. OK? Yes. So I'm saying that is cutting edge enough for somebody to, who sees cutting edge phenomena and say, I want to go in that direction, especially if it's within your interest. Uh, so the programs we have are cutting edge. Let me tell you something. I came from a public university. I taught at Kenyatta University for a bit. Eh? Yes. Actually, not a bit. Many years. <laughs> many years. Yes. So I taught at KU, but uh, when I came here, I didn't come directly from KU. I went to uh, NGO World for a while and then came here. What surprised me about Park University was the quality of teaching in the classroom. The lecturers are devoted. And I used to say to myself, is it because these people are Christians? Mm -hmm. So when they take it, it's almost like, a, you know, that commitment. Some people say it is very religious in commitment. But that's something I noticed with a lot of uh, surprise. Mm -hmm. They are committed. They are committed to give you your qual the quality of what you have given. You pay your fees, and they try your best. Also, of course, as a system now leading the team, we ensure that when, when we promise students this, we give them that. And some people even go beyond that in, in meeting the needs of the students. That's something I would still emphasize. Our classes are small, so it's good you get a uh, closer relationship with the, uh, with the lecturers. You understand them. You can ask many questions. But also that uh, the commitment of the teachers. And then something else I would say, and I, I thank you for this opportunity, is that Park University in the last three years has made a deliberate effort to ensure that we have the best teachers and the best workers here. Probably um, when I listen to you, uh, it sounds like uh, there, there are no challenges at all. But, uh, but I'm sure uh, there, are some, there are some challenges that you go through as an um, institution. So probably if you can share with us, what are some of the challenges that uh, Park University has experienced in the past, or even um, present? Okay, that, that's a good question, given, again, as I said, the competition. Mm -hmm. well, you know where this competition, it means I've got to attract the clients. I've got to make sure the client is satisfied. Yes. The university has just finished, uh, or just gotten a report of a re 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 survey we did. We did a survey in February. We do this every two years eh, on uh, client satisfaction, student satisfaction, and actually also staff. Yes. And, and it is that one that makes us know where we are. Mm -hmm. Some of the challenges we face in private universities is making sure our client is satisfied. It's a challenge. Because it's not like uh, public universities where they are given 4,000 students, they are given 3,000 students. And it's not a bad thing because those are, those are our public universities and we are products of public universities. Yes. But I'm saying with, when you're running a private university, your quality must be very high for you to attract students. So when you hear us, we've grown from this number to this number, and in this university we've really grown in the last two years. Mm -hmm. It is because the quality is up. You've got to keep it there and work at it. Mm -hmm. And you know, like I do, being number one mm -hmm. is hard. Mm -hmm. Staying number one is harder. Yeah. Yes, it's harder. Yeah. So we work very hard on that. So attracting clientele, uh, another thing that is hard on private universities is getting money to provide all the infrastructure needed mm -hmm. because you don't depend on government. Government doesn't give you any money. Uh -huh. So you've got to raise your money through student enrollment and through many other means. Okay. So we have to work very hard. We've yes. got to do fundraising. Mm -hmm. We've got to have increased student enrollment. Mm -hmm. We've got to have businesses. Yes. We've got to have uh, networks and you know collaborations mm -hmm. that bring in money. And it keeps us on our toes. But I can assure you it's a happy experience. Okay. I've been here two years. I love what I do. I love what my team does. And also when you have a good team in place, like we do have at Park University, really a good team. Mm -hmm. People who are committed to what they do and they're running for it, then it, it, it softens mm -hmm. the, the hard, you know, hard sides of running a private university. Yes. I, think, I think basically those would be the tough. It, most private university visits would tell you it's the issue of where do we get the money from. Mm -hmm. And so that becomes the 
first line of address. Yeah. I think like any other enterprise where there's a crowded space, mm -hmm. it's challenging. Okay. Yes, but I can assure you it is, uh, we, I enjoy it. I wake up every morning and I'm not saying, oh, I'm going to, you know, the board to a board space. Yeah. Uh -uh. This place is, and then also the students we have are very, they're amazing students, committed to what they are doing, they are pursuing. Some are so creative, you want to listen to them. So they are part of the solutions we have. They are actually our student council, led by a president. We have a pres another president here, student president. They give us solutions. They are the ones who see something and they tell you, hey, couldn't we do this different? So you don't hear riots, you don't hear crazy things like those. Yeah, yes, I've yes. never heard of anything. No, like no, that. really, really, really do we reach there? Yes. <laughs> we try to listen. Yes, in my time here, I've had one near, 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 okay. near situation yes. like that. But they came in here and then we heard what they were talking about and we said, why don't we sit down yes. and, and just listen to what the issues are. And truly, the issues they had, we listed them, we discussed them together in a meeting and decided how we would address them yes. and we have been giving them feedback until those issues were done, were, were, were engaged. So they become part of the solution. So yes, there are more solution givers around here. Mm -hmm. And remember, it's a leadership university. So if my students don't know how to lead, how will we teach leadership uh -huh. yeah, to others if we are not doing leadership well? Right here. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Right, I'm sure you're learning something. We take a short break, but we'll be back in just a bit.